GTA 4 is more realistic than GTA 5. Force it, I can't tell, impress my friends. I say that I pay five dollars to a bad bunny every month, but I can impress them that I've been to the Super Bowl. Speaking of a bad bunny, any white knights in chat? Hey, did you want anything? No, do you want anything? No, welcome to you, Kanda. But you are uh, here. I was just paralyzed for a second after putting my plate away. Do you never have that? That you just look at something and get paralyzed for a second? Uh, yeah, you. Welcome Because you're so you stunning. Uh. Yeah, the physics, I, I have been actually thinking about this a lot. The physics are way more realistic in GTA 4 than GTA 5. Like, look at this guy. He's a fucking Muay Thai kickboxer. Look at this kick right now. What the fuck? Disagree. <coughs> uh, Salt Cave trolled on and says, Hey man, have a nice stream. Here's a funny video to start of the week, right? Huh? I have like a, uh, it's like a weird cringe feeling because I'm looking at the legs and the legs are so fucking skinny, right? And I'm like, what if they just snap? Oh. Oh. What if they just snap, you know? They look like they could snap. Easily. <laughs> Americans. They're not necessarily American. We have a lot of overweight countries in the YouTube. Spain. Germany is kinda overweight. Um, I think those are the top two. Then three, I don't know. UK? UK probably, yeah. Probably UK. Wait, which one did you say? I said Germany, Spain, UK. Yeah, they're all. Let's see. Top overweight countries. That's kind of weird writing. Uh, Do Europe. Europe. Not the EU. <laughs> uh, oh, actually, Turkey has 31%, Malta has 29%, and UK has 27%. Wow. Where's, Germany's not that high up, actually. It's 
Germany's not even on the list. Spain is on the list, but not Germany. <clears throat> ah. Really? Czech Republic. Yeah, Czech Republic is here. Czech Republic is up. It's like number six or seven. Where's Sweden? On Sweden the is not on that shit. <laughs> this is just top 15. You think Sweden is skinnier than the Netherlands? Uh, this yeah, yeah. You do think that? Sweden is probably skinnier than the Netherlands. I'm 90% sure. Not true, okay. Overweight percentage Netherlands. Two thousand nineteen. Uh, uh, they, uh, they, they, they divide in the categories of age. I don't like that one. I just want to see an overall obesity rate in the Netherlands. It says here that 52%, this is not uh, obesity, this is just overweight. 52% um, over the age of 20 were overweight, 18% obese. And then Sweden. This is from 2008, 53%, so 1% more in Sweden. Uh, they are from the same. They are from the same uh, year, both them, but 2008. And I think that I think that Sweden has gone down, and uh, Netherlands has gone up. But there's no more. I can't find a recent study. <clears throat> but yeah. It's a growing, growing problem, huh? <laughs> False packs on it says it's just like the video game force him. Totally lost it, it's freaking me out. Don't even Anthony. They don't know what's real and what's a game. Drop it! Recoil. Not like shooting in a video game, huh? Actually, it's exactly the same. <laughs> It's not like shooting a video game, huh? Actually, it's exactly the same. Sign my petition. <laughs> Tagadon is here says, watch this Poggers video, it's about China, Chinese social credit points. Pretty scary. Don't, don't link me any more fucking links. This Poggers. video was made possible by Audible. Sign up for a 30 day free trial. Free Audible is a video game you took in your originals. What if every action that you took in your life was recorded in a score like it was a video game? Bad actions lowered your score, while good actions raised your score. Your score could easily be looked up by anybody online, and depending on how high or low it was, people may think higher or lesser of you. Your score's value reflects how everybody else in the real world game of life perceives you as either a good or a bad person. While you, in turn, can easily look up anybody else's score to gauge their own trustworthiness right when you meet them. It might seem like a weird 
premiered episode of Black Mirror. But at some point later this year, in 2020, the largest country in the world is set to roll out a nationwide system very similar to this concept that will affect the daily lives of over 17% of the human population, and it's called the Social Credit System. Once rolled out later this year, it's expected that every one of the 1.4 billion citizens of China will be assigned a social credit score that will increase or decrease depending on actions taken that are considered by the state to be either socially beneficial or socially harmful. It will draw upon an unprecedented amount of data, using an individual's government, financial, and criminal records, as well as their online search histories, shopping habits, and social media posts. The purpose of the system is to attempt to better what? monitor, rate, and regulate the financial, social, and moral behavior of China's citizens in perhaps the most ambitious social experiment undertaken in the 21st century. Citizens with higher scores can expect a multitude of social benefits, while citizens with lower scores can expect a multitude of social punishments. By using a system of rewards and punishments like this, the Chinese government hopes to influence what it considers better social behavior from among its citizens. But the idea for the social credit system didn't just come out of nowhere. China working. essentially began beta testing the system in back in 2009, country, when it began authorizing regional Especially cities across the country the to launch their own pilot systems. Over 42 of these systems are currently in operation right across now, China, now. but each one is different and unique from every other system, and most don't even use an individual scoring number. So something you might do that would negatively affect your standing under the Beijing system might have no effect under the different system in Shanghai, or vice versa. The different regional systems in operation today have different criteria for what are considered positive or negative Probably actions have like and clubs different rewards where you and have punishments. To have so it's really difficult to generalize the system as it stands today and it's whatever. difficult to predict what the final nationwide system will look like that Beijing finally decides upon. Overall, the central government of China has been analyzing these regional pilots for years now to see what works and what doesn't work for when they launch the nationwide system later, which is tentatively scheduled to be later in 2020. The nationwide system might include everything from all the regional pilots, it might pick and choose certain parts from different systems, Search or it history, might though. include almost nothing at all from any of them. We just won't know until fact, China reveals more details China. later. However, there is plenty of room for some extreme speculation. So, here is a potential preview of everything that might be included from examples across all of China's current regional pilots. So, based on the various systems already in place, activities that could supposedly increase increase your social credit score once the nationwide system is in place would be things like donating blood, paying your bills on time, donating to charity, signing up for volunteer work or community service, taking care of elderly family members, or being a model employee at work, along with more, um, weird activities like publicly praising the Chinese government on social media or assisting the government authorities with cracking down on political dissenters or religious dissidents. But what I find a lot more interesting than the activities that can raise your score, though, are the various fun activities that can lower it. Under the current regional pilot in the city of Suzhou, getting caught cheating in online video games will negatively affect your social credit score. It's also Good. been speculated that playing what the government considers to be an excessive amount of video games will also hurt your score. So here's a big F to all the gamers in China if that ends up finding its way into the final system. Other oh, things shit. that can negatively affect your score that might find their way into the final system include things like participating in anything on this list of groups that China considers a cult, an insincere apology in court for a crime committed, spreading false rumors or fake news on the apology. internet, posting anti-government messages on social How media, you know not that? visiting your aging parents you know frequently enough, insincere. participating in protests against the Chinese authorities, paying your bills late, blasting loud music on public transportation, which, to be fair, is actually kind of reasonable, but also things like ordering takeout without picking it up, or scheduling something like a doctor's appointment or a hotel reservation and not showing up, along with other things like not sorting your waste properly or committing yeah, traffic violations like that, jaywalking though. or running a red light. Currently, under the systems in Shanghai and Jinan, a citizen's score can be lowered for walking their dog in public without a leash or for not picking up their poop. If enough of these dog-related transgressions take place, the city can legally take your dog away from you and you can get slapped with up to a five-year ban on owning any other dogs. And this leads us into the 
bizarre world of potential rewards and punishments. A higher score can potentially lead to some pretty great benefits like priority admissions for universities, priority resume viewings by employers, cheaper public transportation, free gym access, shorter wait times at hospitals and government agencies, discounts at hotels, and potentially generous tax breaks among other things. Punishments, Jesus on the other Christ. hand, for lower scores this can include some pretty ridiculous things so like being placed on a hard. flight and high-speed train ban and potentially a ban on public transportation in general, which, along with a ban on getting an exit visa, oh effectively traps the recipient into being a modern-day serf unable to leave their land. Other punishments include an ineligibility to hold government jobs, losing access to private schools or universities, losing access for children attending private schools or universities, being restricted to only a low-speed internet connection, a ban on renting hotels, and the weirdest of all, potentially becoming the subject of extensive public shaming campaigns. Lower score citizens may have their photos and ID numbers placed on big LED screens at busy public intersections or displayed on movie screens at theaters before the movie plays, like a weird kind of ad where you're supposed to laugh at real people. But shiny social media companies are also helping the government out with this. In the city of Nanning, the social media app Douyin, basically the Chinese version of TikTok, partnered up with a local court to broadcast pictures of people with low social credit scores in between videos. While China's biggest dating app, called Baihe, has already begun allowing users to publish their social credit scores inside of the app, which leads to the implication Wait, that higher score people added? will do better in online dating Wait. versus people with lower scores. China is already preparing a massive investment into nationwide surveillance to help assist the system once it's finally rolled out. In 2019, it was estimated that there were already over 200 million CCTV cameras in operation by the Chinese government across the country for surveillance purposes. But by the end of 2020, that number is expected to skyrocket to well over 620 million cameras nationwide, almost enough for one camera for every two people in the what? country, many of which will be equipped with new facial recognition technology that will potentially be able to catch somebody doing something cameras. in public, like jaywalking and lowering their social credit score. And as of June 2019, China has has already denied 26.8 million airline tickets and 6 million high-speed rail tickets to individuals in the country who have too low of a standing under the current regional systems. And it's not just individuals that China is potentially planning on assigning scores to, but entire corporations might get their own individual scores as well. Corporations in good standing under the system will receive things like tax breaks, while corporations in poor standing will get harsher increased tax rates. And as the 2020 deadline approaches, Approaches for the launch of the nationwide system, it continues to remain largely. Well, I've never heard of this before. We know that the system will be in place only in mainland year. China. The special administrative regions of Hong Kong and Macau will be exempt. But other than that, we'll have to wait and see what China announces. And so far, China has remained silent. But if you're impatient and you want to hear more about what life could really be like under a weird dystopian future, you should check out George Orwell's 1984. And like so many other great true. books, 1984 is available as an audiobook on... Yeah, sure. I don't know. Uh, that sounds a little bit too extreme, even for China. Like, how do you actually enforce this shit properly? Uh, I don't know. Like, sure, facial recognition software, but someone has to fucking, oh my god, dude. It's just fucking ridiculous, actually. 620 million cameras with facial recognition. Welcome to Uganda. The future is here. Just wear a mask, maybe. Just uh, surf on your neighbor's Wi-Fi. There are so many things that can, you know, fuck up the system. Holy fuck.